Okay, hello everybody, welcome back. More film reviews. I said you were going to get all the film reviews. I'm going to give you all the film reviews. Today's film review, Hero, Hero Month continuing. We're doing one of the first heroes. The first Avenger, actually. To be more clear, Captain America. The first Avenger is what we're going to be covering today. I'm, not, I'm just going to keep saying Captain America rather than the full title. Just because I feel like it'd be a bit easier. Alright, scores are 6.9 out of 10 on IMDb, 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, and 66% on Metacritic. It's a decent film. It's it's set in 1941, uh, World War II times, where Hitler, what Hitler was about. About two hours long action adventure film. Yeah, not a bad film, to be fair. Not a bad film. I think a lot of these origin films, like if you're not a big... I think I've said this about a couple of other films. If you're not a big superhero fan, the original films, I think, are decent. Like, if you're just watching them by themselves, you don't need to go into story or more detail. Watch everything. If you just watch all the first ones, they seem a lot more, like, not linked with anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean. So, let's go into the plot and story of Captain America. So, it starts off, well, first it starts off with a bunch of people finding an, a ship under ice with Captain America's shield. That's like the end bit, but they start that off. Next, they cut to a scene. I don't know what place it was, but there was a guy called Johann Schmidt, and he basically attacks this area that's guarding the Tesseract, which is, I believe, the Space Infinity Stone. He, he's guarding that. He eventually finds it, kidnaps it, destroys the village. Uh, he does it all for Hydra, and as he shoots the guy, some blood spatters on his Hydra logo just there, which is a skull and thingy, and it gets covered in blood, so it's a bit of red skull there, referencing for a bit later. I like the foreshadowing. It's good. It's good. They had a lot of foreshadowing in this film, which is which is a good aspect, and if, especially if you know what's going to happen, watching it back, the, it's honestly really good to see all the details. Anyway, then we cut to Brooklyn. You see this very skinny kid, very short kid, probably like 5'2 or something. Very short kid. Uh, played by Chris Evans, Captain America. Named Steve Rogers, or Steven Rogers, whatever you prefer. He wants to enlist the army. He keeps getting rejected again and again. He eventually goes out with his friend Bucky after Bucky saves him from being beaten up. He tries to take him out with some women, um, but Steve's not really too interested. He goes to apply to another US Army base. The guy hears his story and wants to recruit him. He gets recruited, he looks through, he gets into the army. The guy's not like fully on board with it. The, uh, the main army guy, the sergeant lieutenant, I don't know what they're called, but yeah, whatever that guy, they eventually start going. There's a scene where they're all running, they're halfway through. It's like, if you can get the flag, you can just get a ride back. No one can do it. Steve digs it out. He gets the flag. Heads back. <coughs> because he's going to be selected for a super secret soldier serum to, like, make him more strong and, like, a new hybrid. They're not sure. The, the main army guy's not sure why he wanted to do it. He throws a dummy grenade and he throws himself on it to protect the rest of his soldiers. So he's got heart. He's got that kind of... Uh, integrity. <coughs> Sorry, my apologies. Then they go off, they make the serum, he becomes Captain America, it all goes well. He becomes tall, muscly, agile, everything goes really well for him. But they won't let him fight in the army right now, so they make him this figure called Captain America, and they use him as like an American idol. He does like shows and performances and all that stuff multiple times and then eventually he gets sick of it, he gets into the art, he does it for the army and then he gets told by the army that a bunch of soldiers are in trouble. So he personally goes out and saves them by himself, frees everyone and it all goes pretty well. Eventually then he becomes, he gets his team, a group of six, they want to try and help him with his friend Bucky Barnes. He then gets Howard Stark, uh, makes him a shield and everything like that. It gets the uniform. They go. They destroy a bunch of Hydra bases. They they can destroy quite a few because Steve saw the whole locations and plan while he was there. 
So he, they destroy all the bases one by one. And as he's like rescuing Lucky, he actually does see Johann Schmidt, takes up his face, becomes Red Skull, is what most people know as Red Skull. They get to the final Hydra base. Uh, the plan is just go in, strike force, go in. He eventually kicks the ass of a bunch of people until he gets caught, which was his plan all along. Speaks to Red Skull, and then eventually another fight scene breaks out. Red Skull's trying to run, he goes after him, gets on a ship, they both get on the ship together. He gets on the ship, he's trying to confront him. Red Skull's like not having any of this. His ship's getting destroyed because it's powered by the Tesseract, the Space Stone, that's what it's all about. Because this guy is an evil dude. Eventually, Captain America, he doesn't really stop him. Red Skull grabs the Tesseract and it is too powerful. It like does too much power on him. It destroys him and like vaporizes him. And then obviously it falls to the ground and just like dives into the ocean where Howard Stark collects it later. But before that, he's in the ship and he says to Peggy, oh yeah, Peggy Carter, she's, she's a big part of this thing. There's like sort of love interest. If you will. I just glossed over that part, not too interesting. There, you know the story. Crashes into the ice and says he'll he'll dance with her eventually. Um, crashes into the ice, freezes over, he gets woken up in the year, I think, 2012 or 2011. I can't remember, this film was 2011, yeah, this film was filmed in 2011, so he wakes up in 2011. Um, eventually he meets with Nick Fury, he says, these are the new times and everything like that. And then, yeah, the film just ends there. And if you haven't seen, like, the end bits there, there's another trailer to The Avengers, which I'll be covering another time. But in terms of this film, it got apes and on, yeah, it's not a bad film. I think 7 out of 10 is so fair enough. I'll see, for First Avenger, it's not a bad film. It's not, like, bad concept or anything like that. I think this first film really made you feel for Captain America, made you give him an insight into his story and all that. So I think it's quite like an interesting concept to have a guy who's, I mean, sort of superpowers, sort of not really, but you get the idea. So that's Captain America for you. Hopefully you enjoyed and I will see you for another hero film review tomorrow. Right then. Bye. Subscribe.